Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are playing treasure. That is what you are. Gold spans our shining star. Oh, uh, God, I'm, am I going to cut that from the intro? Or have we reached the point where the cringe is acceptable? I don't know. We'll leave it for now. I'm going to contemplate that while you contemplate this decklist and let it just soak into your bloodstream. And I am going to pitch Shill, the Covert Ghost Shill of the day, my Twitter account. It's my general home for nonsense and silliness. If you would like to see my face photoshopped onto Tenacious Underdog with a picture of Crokies in the corner gazing up at me lovingly, that's the kind of thing you can find on Twitter. We also post our daily deck video every, like, the, the, a screenshot of what I am doing right now, recording the intro, gets put on Twitter every day along with, in a post, along with a link to the deck list on aetherhub.com. So I know the reason that that might be helpful is some of you don't have time to watch all the videos all the time, but you always want to know what I'm playing that day. Like, you know, what's he going to play? Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you get a post every day showing you what deck I'm playing. So that's fun, and it has nice, easy access. Go to Aetherhub, export it, play it in Arena, things like that. Even if you don't have time to watch the video, you can keep up with what I'm playing. So follow Covert Go Blue on Twitter. Link in the description. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. It's my nonsense social media platform of choice. Okay. Is it treasures? It is. God, I can't not do that joke. It's basically Jeskai, though. It's got two white cards, and the white cards at least add a little bit of spice to the pile. We have a few new cards that stand out. One, Big Score. Big Score is unexpected windfall, but easier to cast. Thank God that we have this, because this wasn't enough, I guess. Now we have this as well. We're running the full eight copies in this particular deck because what I love with this deck, some people are calling it, I think the the new Capenna Championship starts today, and I think the casters are calling it Jeskai Storm. And that's because when you get a Goldspan Dragon on the battlefield and you have two treasures, it costs two treasures to cast Unexpected Windfall. And then it costs two treasures to cast big score, but they make two treasures in addition. So like these go to the, like you can just cast another one and another one and another one and another one, as long as you have the treasures and then you play a Leer and then you cast them from the graveyard as well. And you cast another one and another one and another one. And you're just drawing through your deck, just right right through your deck. There's some other tricks along the way. Using cheap one mana spells like Spike Field Hazard, you can add another treasure to the mix from your Goldspan Dragon. Go mana positive. Prismaric Command can do this as well. Go one mana positive. And eventually, maybe, if the stars align, you find Show of Confidence. And because you cast like three, four, six, ten, I don't know how many unexpected windfalls and big scores, you cast this card and it copies for all of those and they all target Goldspan and they all make treasure and now you have huge mana explosion. Yeah, it's, it's a fun and exciting combo thing for you, the person doing it, uh, opponent not so much. It's like Goldspan snooze. I get it. It's been around for a minute, but we have to keep trying it and see how it lines up with the meta. And in a mid-range meta dominated by Esper and Mardu and Obnixilis and things like that, a Goldspan Dragon strategy can interact on a different level and go over the top. Now, this is not the normal like counter everything Goldspan deck. We have kind of a protect Goldspan-y approach with March and you see a guard approach can give hex proof and fading hope can save it and uh Shijiri shelter and Shuari disruption is the only real counter spell we have so it's not the most focused on countering with gold span which is what I think many people associate with gold span it's a much more of a combo -y fun deck now maybe a counter version will be better in the long run but I wanted to pop off a little bit today so this is what we're going for I think it'll be fun let's dive in let the nonsense begin. All right, covert some blue. 
We'll have to draw land. A deck should have a lot of those. Gnarl. You got a brewer over here? What's this? Cool. Another land is nice. Just gonna play that now. Good card. Can't kill it. So, too many expressives. I need to unload my hand a little bit, so we're gonna say go and use the Prismari command and maybe go straight to gold spanning. Because casting expressive there, we just end up discarding the hand size. The ramp deck probably doesn't want to see Goldspan Dragon. It's pretty dangerous for them to deal with. But looks like they're just saying go. So maybe they have something. I could go after their treasure, but I think I'd rather try to fix this iteration strangle whatever pile hand that we have. Maybe they have Decisive Denial? What do you think? Did they have a Jawari? No way. No way they have a Jawari. Let's go for it. And we get to attack. Nice. And they're fading hope. Okay. So, here's the thing. I think I'm supposed to phase it, because I really don't want to cast it again next turn. And now if they play a Titan, we can Fading Hope the Titan. Not great, but better, better than not attacking with gold spans. Okay, even better. Feeding, hoping the Ren token. Unless they need the land. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna miss their land drop here to make a reach, a reach creature. This is pretty cool. Let's see what we hit here. We get a surge. You see a guard approach. Land. Uh, we're gonna use the fading hope. The surge is. Hmm. I guess the surge can hit Ren. If we're willing to sack one of our treasures. But we'll have two, so it's fine. They're missing a land drop, so it's definitely a good idea to kill Ren. Alright, dragons online. Two expressive iterations. You see a guard approach. How do they get out? Chariot. Okay, that's... That's pretty slow. Good card on turn three. Not as great on turn five. Or later. Especially against Goldsman. The Windfall. Let's, let's start popping. Let's get this deck cooking. Let's go Hand. Exile. All right, there's a Leer. Let's go Strangled Deck Surge over here. Might target our own gold span for the mana. Oh, 
Oh no, another fading hope? Jeez. Okay. Um resolve that. Hexproof. Pretty good. Nets of mana. Jawari doesn't work because they have a treasure to sack. Now if I proceed, I lose the mana. So let's go see if we can use it. We can turn it into a red by using it to pay for the windfall, and then we can use the red here to target our own gold span. Definitely don't want to sack a treasure, though. To make another treasure... Then we attack. I guess we try to draw a show of confidence. Darn it! It would have been it would be an awesome finish to draw it there, and we're going to get four looks and possibly draw more big scores and such, but uh, opponent's not interested. I can't say I blame them. Well, if they play a creature, I will kill it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. That wasn't even like I should have warmed that up. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Nope. Still too bad. Not the worst, but I can do better. Maybe I'm supposed to play that on red right there and just be ready to surge on whatever. Jund? Okay. I don't know if we surge on an innkeeper that, that strong. Do we go after an innkeeper like that? I don't think so. There's going to be better stuff, right? <laughs> cat token, cat token. Chariot. Obnixilis, Obnixilis. <laughs> Whoa, blue. Okay. Spell Pierce? I guess we'll see. They're playing around Jawari, I'm guessing. Okay. Blue. Is this going to be the five color deck? Gold Span should be pretty good against the five color deck. Crookies. Got it. Crookie's got to respect the dragon. It's not his favorite thing to play against. All right, hook discarded, another pathway discarded. No triumphs, so rough mana so far. And the treasure's been spent. Okay, there's your triumph. Spike field hazard. Okay, let's use the windfall. I'm not afraid of the reflection. We have a lot of ways to deal. So, do we play a gold span without protection? Probably not in this scenario. We can wait for a protection spell. The Kami War, Binding of Old Gods, all these things are, are problems. Why are we letting the Kiki happen? Because if they try to copy their innkeeper, I'll remove their innkeeper. And then I'll remove their Kiki. Nice and patient. Nice and patient. Huh, hmm. Out of there. 
no little value for you at all. And then we draw another land, we can hit them with Hall, and then they have to start getting concerned. But yeah, if we put Dragon out there to get Bound or Kami Ward, we're in big trouble. Better to wait for protection. Another fable, huh? It's not a land. But maybe we draw into a protection spell off this? We have to draw into something. Hmm. All right. We'll get the another land ready for the hall and we'll big score this turn. Yeah, they dropped two land, so they were flooded out a bit. But now they've got fresh cards, but they're still not playing anything. Sus. Now that we have a Fading Hope, it's time. The problem with the Fading Hope, we really want to cast big scores too. And we have nothing to discard to them. Get the job done. Two turn clock. There's the war. Wait for target. Could have big scored with big score there, and maybe I was supposed to, to be honest, but I think waiting can be, can still pay off here. All right, we can force a chump with the reflection. Drop to seven. Opponent gets to bounce something here and make me discard. I'm guessing they'll target the treasure, but if they target the dragon, that's kind of good for us. Because that means they don't have another way to kill it, and they're at seven, so they have to watch out for the hall. They're really close to flipping the Kami War, though. Good game. Okay, got there. Okay, love the storm carved coasts for easy mana. We might draw into more land. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to play this hazard or not. I think I can wait one turn, see what the opponent does. I mean, if it's like turn one, Usher, I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to keep holding. Hive? A lot of things could come out of the hive. Eye twitches, shambling gas, Valkies. Tenacious underdogs. Ob might be coming. So maybe we're supposed to strangle the underdog and play a tap land? Doesn't sound very appealing to me, but I think it might be right. It's really hard against Rakdos to catch them with a Jawari. It's hard to catch anybody with a Jawari these days. And this way, if they play Ob and they make a Devil, we just spike it. Ooh, that's spikeable. 
Oh, but they've got deadly dispute mana. So we don't... We don't do it. Deadly dispute mana. Too good. Opponent has made their decision that now is the time. And they hit some land, so free land drop. Off Unlucky Witness, what more could you ask for from your one mana card? Do I want another Goldspan Dragon? I mean, it's kind of the all-star of the deck, right? Maybe I was supposed to put this into hand? Nah. nah. It is a little rough that we didn't get to play a tapped spike field hazard that turn. But a little more setup won't kill us. It's 20 to 20. Also, if they underdog us, we can spike it, and then it will exile itself. That's pretty good. Very cautious play from the opponent. I'm sure that they have another Deadly Dispute, because I have not played against Rakdos when they don't have three Deadly Disputes in their top 20 cards. They always do. Okay. So here's the spot. Do we Windfall? I think we just surge this while we can. Before they have the mana for the third Deadly. Which you know they have. Yeah, we'll, we'll find a spot to windfall once the dragon hits the, the table. All right, Harvester, are you gonna ob? Are you gonna underdog? What are you gonna do? Hook for nothing, okay. Deadly Dispute mana available. Good draw. Kaka, dragon, woo! What do you say? <laughs> they're pausing now. They're like, uh, what? Yeah, it's Goldspan Dragon. You ever play against this card? It's really sweet. Runs the... I love that they ran it all the way down to just the tiniest spot here. All right. Infernal Grasp. Let's go, gamer. So they sack the blood. Remember, they had Blood Tithe Harvester to kill the dragon there, but instead they go for the surge. All right, uh, Hexproof. Seems good. Cool! So, if we sack this for red, we can target our own dragon and then windfall? Nah, that's, that's silly. I guess we can still windfall here if when we need to because we were able to make a second treasure. All right, the opponent might go for two blood and then harvester to get rid of the gold span. But then at least we're not taking harvester damage. They need another blood token though. Woof. Aggressive. Let's save the treasures. Let's save everything here. I don't need a spike field hazard. We don't need to get rid of the underdog. The hazard might be really important. Having something to discard to the windfall, get second dragon down, play Leer, like all this stuff, right? Okay, they do go eaten alive. So resolve this. Windfall? Try to hit a protection spell here.
Get a surge. Nope. But we do have you see a guard approach in the graveyard and a leer. How much mana can we make? Eight? Nine? Yeah. Good stuff. Gotta make sure it's all blue, because we want you see a guard approach in the graveyard to be av available. Beautiful. I think we can say go here. Or we could windfall and then decide. Yeah. It's a little risky if they did have a way to kill Goldspan. The shelter is nice. All right, let's kill their stuff. I'm guessing they're going to meat hook, right? Meat hook's pretty bad for us. Maybe I am supposed to then play the expressive iteration while I can, but I guess I'll have I'll have another leer next turn. Yeah, make him have it. Make him have it. Protection doesn't work if they do have uh, the meat hook. Yep, X equals four. No way to, like, gain. We can make another treasure, but we don't have a way to make another mana? Like, if this were an instant, so I guess we should have strangled on our turn, then we could have made some extra treasure with the dragon here and avoided giving them another life. I was trying to save the strangle because in the back of my mind, Ob is always coming, but it's whatever. This time, this time, we strangle. <laughs> Leave open the instance. They're gonna power up Hive, so let's have a red available with the Surge. Stop them from doing that. We really need a Leer to make another turn cycle, though. Doggo. They're only at... They're at 10. It takes so much damage from these things. Oh, yeah. I guess from Goldspan Dragons, too, should be mentioned. <laughs> All right. The blood is starting... To get drunk. Drank? Drunk. Drunk in the blood. <laughs> Alright. I've been I've been jonesing for this iteration. Oh look, iterations. Land. 
Yeah. All right, good stuff. Still got mana open. Got a few ways to kill off the creature lands. The opponent doesn't have the mana to power up both, right? Not quite. Close race. And now at seven, they have to worry about Hall. Not the combo pop-off we were hoping for. Just good old fashioned is it control gold span and card advantage and removal. And the occasional protection spell. If we kill that, we go to seven. I don't think that hurts us too badly. They went to five. They're gonna go for obbing it, not going to attack. Interesting. All right. Resolve one ob. I think they might have missed something here because After this has three. Years, so we can surge finally, it. A new conquest. This isn't over. What you gonna do? Plus? I'll discard. Okay, Devil. You work for me now, Runt. So, I'm trying to think for one black, what could they have, right? Because we could just tap this and swing. And I'm trying to think for one black, do they have a card that gets them out of that? And I don't think they do. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. Two Juaris, huh? What you got, opponent? What you up to? That priority passed really slowly, very sus. They got something for one mana here. Maybe it's some playing with fire. Werewolf? Yeah, probably some playing with fire. You can strangle that. In fact, we need, or we can keep day-night cycle from ever starting. Let's strangle it. Get used to disappointment. All right. A lot of pressure to hit an untapped land. We do not. So I guess we're doing this, 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 and then we're bluffing. Oops. I played the wrong land. Okay, they played around it anyway. <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, gold span. Awesome. It's about to get real. The clock has arrived. Oh, they've got a way to deal four? Play with fire number one. Resolve. Play with fire number two. Or flame bless a bolt. Resolve that. Let's do this. We could Juari it, but I think we're better off marching. Because then they can't kill our dragon during the next turn. We don't get to attack this turn. Ooh. We can sack this treasure, kill this pack leader. But then we still need to... Let's see. Can we do all this? We need to float the mana. 
We need to float the mana. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, cool. Beautiful. Got him. Yes. I'm king of the world. I know how to work a gold span. We are completely out of stuff, but we just need to draw a leer and we'll be fine. It returns. They probably don't have two more shocks handy, do they? Not yet. Play with fire in my face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, shocktastic werewolves. You'll love to see it. I'm down to 18. <laughs> Oof. Big haul. Big haul, big attacks. Five life. Impress me. That's a lot of land you drew. I'm sorry, wolves, but... Too many shocks. Maybe you're just trying to beat Mono White. I don't know. Even then, Adeline kind of thinks that's funny. <laughs> it's content play. Our opponent has given us four life and sent themselves uh, back, back to the kennel. Opponent goes first. The show of confidence in the opener. We have two removal spells and two leers. This is not a great opening hand. It's kind of like a five-card opening hand, but it would be an amazing five-card opening hand. I don't know if I'm supposed to mull it or not, but, you know, we haven't cast the show of confidence on the show, so that helps me talk myself into it. We're just an expressive iteration or a big score in a land away from being able to fix everything. Ta-da! Beach. It could have Luminar Cast Pirate. Uh, I can't shoot that. Three toughness. Look how bad this draw just became. Angels. Four toughness. Yeah, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. Uh, 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 GG. Can't kill anything. Arr. What is left of a gamer who can't kill his opponent's creatures? Nothing. So, do I need to hit with a Jawari for this to be a real game? What am I doing for four mana? Nothing really. Yeah, I need to hit with a Jawari for this to be a real game, so... They'll probably play around it, but give them a chance not to. We're too far behind. We need... we need riskies. Okay, opponent just swinging in no angel play. And then post-combat, which is definitely wrong, the one toughness creature I could have killed. Six damage next turn. Leer plus Surge with an artifact? Nope. Mmm. I'm trying to think if I could like Prismari Command Ramp there. This helps a lot. 
trying to think of whether or not I want the Ottawara in my hand because another bounce spell could be really good, but I think we just play it. The threat of Jwari might still make them make a mistake like they did last turn, missing a point of damage. Uh-huh. Gotta go after this one. Windfall. We're gonna go to 10. We're not gonna be dead. I guess this is a card we need. Need a lot to go right. Playing Leer here just gets it killed. So somehow we have to clear their board next turn. We will have Surge, Fading Hope. That's two things. We still have to deal with the Limvala. So, take seven and hope. Fading hope, but hope, nonetheless. Maybe they'll be afraid to actually deploy stuff into the open mana. <laughs> and maybe not. All right, so we have one fading hope. What do we need? Like March of Swirling Mist? Another Voltage Surge? I don't know. I really don't know. But let's try. Strangle, and you see a guard approach. Strangle helps. So one man away. You see a, a guard approach could help too. All right. So Strangle is a one man away to get them to play the Limvala. Then we drop. No, but we don't have enough to sacrifice an artifact to the Surge. We just have the Fading Hope. So we have to use the UC a guard approach to tap one of these. Okay, 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 okay. They might have counter spells. They are Esper Angels, but we have Leer, so they have to kill Leer, then they can counter something. And they might go for it right here. Yep, there you go. And now we tap target creature. This one's targeting there, this target's here. Okay. And they can't counter it. Okay. Not quite dead. They're impressed. That that was my goal, just to impress them. So we still have this to deal with. If we have an artifact, we can surge it. I think I bottom this. Like, maybe double Prismari Command is another way to deal with it, but I think that's really ambitious. So we have to tap it again. Maybe I was supposed... Oh, God. I probably was supposed to keep that command, huh? And this, this will have double strike, and they can kill me if they have an angel. Balls. The other option is to try to draw into March of Swirling Mist with big score. Any angel killing me is probably not a gamble I'm willing to take. That ain't it. Ah! Oh, I really screwed myself on that one. Um, yeah, I think the way I played my early turns was too dialed in on, like, cheap white creatures, not three and four toughness white creatures. I cost myself that one. Alvin, but no chipmunks. Easy. They got nothing without him. <laughs> Alvin's the Shawn Michaels of the group. All right, just get these lands down. I think I've been playing too clever with them. It's costing me games.
Just get back to fundamental best of one magic. Hit your land drops. Cast things on curve. Kill things when you can. Play Goldspan. Win games. Mardu. I think a uh, voltage surge is totally reasonable. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, I think we just let this thing body us a little bit. <laughs> Let's not let it flip tonight, though, on our watch. Pirate Church. Ah, pirate, pirate, pirate. Okay. Yay. So I didn't discard and cast Strangle on Trespasser just because I'm trying to keep my hand size reasonable because I want to do a lot of big score shenanigans, but maybe I was supposed to. Maybe I was supposed to. I like my value too much. It gets me in trouble. I am very aware of my own shortcomings. But it also wins a lot of games. It's hard to tell. I am what I am in this world. Alright, dragon. To the moon. Maybe we'll actually get to do the combo part of the deck where we've got Leer and Goldspan and casting big scores over and over and, you know, fun stuff like that. Sure. Our opponent is the master of the Graveyard Trespasser. Which is a good... It's a good card in mid-range mirrors. You're in best of one, though? I think people try way too hard with cards like Graveyard Trespasser, to be honest. Everybody into the pool. Opponent's trying to kill me. Can't blame him. And are they holding a Vanishing Verse? Doesn't really matter, right? We can also just do this on our turns. If it costs treasures, it's the same. All right, gonna go nuts. It's gonna be fun. Look at all that removal. Uh, I want to make sure I have a red left over. I guess the best way to do that is cast one of these first, right? But I want the leer down. Okay, so I'll do it like this. I want the ward to get negated by leer's can't be countered ability. I guess we can do it post-combat after we make more mana. Okay, still moving. Decline because of Leer. Can't, Ward can't counter the Strangle. Out of there. 
So this is going to flip day night for sure. Oh no. Yeah, it's a five five. Okay, never mind. Day night's not part of it. We could strangle and surge this thing. And still have a blue available. All right, <laughs> trigger, trigger, trigger. Make sure you click it right. All right, cleaned up the mess. Now, make new treasure with the gold span. Turn one mana into two. Now we could do this, but I think we just pass here and rely on you see a guard approach to get us to the next turn. Try not to get hooked. I guess if we do get hooked, it's not the end of the world. We still have two expressive iterations. All right, they don't blitz it. It would run into the leer, I suppose. Did they forget to draw with their bank buster? Maybe they got really bored of last turn. I see. I see. All right. Tap target creature. <laughs> and now they're dead. They put themselves on exactly seven. Thanks for going to seven, opponent. Makes my job easy instead of having to go through all the nonsense. Christmas, Christmas time is here. And we are back for the post-game wrap, checking out the stats powered by MTGA Assistant. Download link in the description. Try it out. So many features. You get to go over on their main page and see like meta decks as they are trending right before your very eyes. Down, down mono white. God, the mono white and runes are number one. Darn, I would say down with mono white, but then runes just goes to number one. Anyway, it's fun. Uh, I went six and five. I clicked away from it. Oh my gosh. No, this is, this is like you guys seeing my dirty laundry. Oh, uh, this is the panel where it shows like all of your stats and oh, oh, I hate it because there's so many failed experiments in there. But um, yeah, is it treasures, just guy treasures combo? Uh, six and five, that's what I would expect for the deck. A little bit better than 500. A little bit above average, but not broken. I would say a deck like this was probably at it, the height of its power a few sets ago. Also, All Runs Epiphany got banned. We remember that. And this deck with All Runs Epiphany just had to play Goldspan, get to All Runs Epiphany, and then it could win very quickly. Usually, they just take two or three turns in a row, and Goldspan beats you to death with the birds. Like, that was this deck at the height of its power. Now, especially running, you know, trying to combo off with Leer and things, it's a little bit fragile. It's a little bit slow. Its removal doesn't line up amazingly well. Strangle doesn't actually kill everything or at the right time. Uh, Thundering Rebuke certainly is a substitute that goes one point higher, but still a lot of the same issues. Not everything that you need to die will freaking die. So there's, there's a lot of challenges right now for the Is It Treasures deck that weren't there before, and I think that makes it a very average deck. I still get annoyed when I play against Goldspan Dragon Piles, but I probably don't need to be. They're a lot fairer now than they used to be. Esper certainly has a lot of tools to compete with these kind of decks. Rafine can get bigger than Goldspan Dragon, and it only costs three mana. So uh, yeah, I think that the rage on Is It is kind of over. 
you can still be annoyed with them if you want to, but I don't think they deserve it as much as they used to. Standard's in a weird place, man. Uh, there's also, of course, other versions that you can play. You can play Goldspan Dragon, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and more of a controly type thing with counter spells, and we'll probably do that on the channel sometime. It's a little, you know kind of been there done that but we got a long summer guys until new cards and i still like to win sometimes i have found that this meta in particular has so many traps there are so many cool looking kind of cards from new capenna that i definitely pegged as memes or commander cards but then you're like you know what you know what i need something new today we're gonna try that card and then you try it and yep you yep that 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 was a meme you get pounded into the ground like a tent stake being hit by a hammer bam 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 <laughs> and and after you lose a whole bunch of games you're like yeah that wasn't a great idea was it so we're going to have to revisit and play all the hits, everything that we hope can compete on the ladder. And maybe in the meantime, I'll play some Historic Brawl or do some other nonsense. You'll either find it on Twitch or maybe I'll even make time for it as like double videos. But you know the drill for this channel to live, thrive, serve the people who have followed me for years, every day, standard video. Here you go. Hope you like it. Some decks, brilliant. Giga Brain, some decks, yeah, I guess he just stole that from somebody else. Oh, well, but hey, you try doing it every day, man. <sighs> Especially while traveling. I'm going to DreamHack Dallas soon. So to everybody who didn't hear about that yet, I mentioned it in a few videos. Look for the one in best of one coming to DreamHack Dallas, where I would love to play Commander with you guys. Also looking into arranging some kind of a meetup, maybe somewhere in Dallas, maybe on Sunday, on Sunday or Monday, just for the fans. Um, I'm trying to get out and meet the fans, and it definitely in the U.S. we're making it happen. I've got God knows so many places. I'm going to be in Dallas on June 3rd through 5th. I'm going to be in Philadelphia for too many near Philadelphia. It's not like in Philadelphia, it's outside it. Anyway, too many games is a convention I'm doing in Philadelphia uh, June 24th through 26th, I think. I've got to double check those dates. I just got invited to Command Fest Indie. That's in early July. I'm definitely at Command Fest Orlando, hosted by Cool Stuff Inc. at the end of July. Uh, that's like July the 21st i'm part of a vip package or if you want to play like sealed commander with me and some other celebrities like uh oh i don't know brian kibler pleasant kenobi other folks like that they might still have spots for that it might be sold out but check out command fest orlando in august i might be doing gen con not 100 percent sure since it might would be my third time to indie i'm probably going to do either command fest indie or gen con one of the others um September, I might be doing Dragon Con in Atlanta, but there was something else I was supposed to do as well. There's TwitchCon in San Diego in November. In October, I'm definitely going to Atlanta for DreamHack. So yeah, at least in the US, Operation, get out there, meet the fans. Really excited to actually meet up with so many of you who have just been, you know, voices in the comments and statistics on the viewership graph for so many years. But I think that something that keeps me driven and motivated through this journey, whatever you want to call it, hero's journey or villain's journey, however you want to look at uh, what we've done here, um, becoming, I, I don't talk about this often, but it's true. We, this is the most watched MTG arena channel. This is the most watched. I, I'm probably the most watched MTG arena player in the world. The journey to get there has really been about you guys. Um, because without you, I'm just talking to a wall. And it's uh, definitely on my mission, on my mind to get out there and meet many of you and say thank you. And I've always tried to keep in the back of my head, no matter what's going on, no matter what the YouTube metrics are like, no matter what the monetization was like, no matter what's going on, People blame the algorithm like they blame the shuffler, man. The YouTube algorithm is a villain for a lot of people. I always try to remember those, those are real people in the algorithm, you know. Try try to figure out what they want. Try to give them what they want. Try to, try to make them smile or cringe or laugh or, you know, yell about the shuffler or whatever it is that gets them through their day. I know that you're real people out there. I care about you, and I'm on a mission to get out there and meet you, and hopefully in the future, in the not too distant future, maybe next year, like 2020, 
2023, we can start getting international again. I haven't been out of the country uh, since COVID started uh, for good reasons, right? We're, we're all being very careful about travel and things like that. But I know I have a huge audience. Germany, you're the number two nation. Number three is Canada. Number four is Brazil. Like I, I really pay attention to these things. I know that you guys are out there and I want to get out there and meet you guys as well. Um, so it's coming to uh, some kind of a commander convention near you, Covert Go Blue. I could definitely sit at home, crank out arena videos and, you know, stack money that way, but uh, I want to meet the people behind the statistics. I'm coming to see you, cool kids. All right. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.